Ra's Journey Through the Underworld The First Hour As established, the underworld was divided into 12 sections, each one representing an hour of the night. The Egyptians believed that a dead soul's journey started out when Ra entered the realm at sundown. This is what is said about the first region of the underworld. To reach the other world, the great Ra is said to enter a hall where his form changes to fit the world of the dead. Inside the hall, he is awaited by apes who open the doors to him, granting him entrance. As he sails through, the apes guide his boat, singing his praises and hymns until he has entered the underworld. In the hall, aside from the apes, one can find the trapped souls of the dead as well as several gods, though the gods are unspecified. As for the souls of the dead, these belong to the people who were unqualified to enter the realm of the dead. According to ancient Egyptian religious customs, several funerary ceremonies and rites had to take place to prepare the soul for the underworld. Nevertheless, not all could afford these expensive rituals. Consequently, many souls ended up trapped inside the hall, neutral ground between both worlds. As he sails his boat, Ra is escorted by a company of gods, the same company that traveled with him across the skies in the morning. The one new addition to the boat, however, was a guide who changed every hour. Each region had a specific guide and patron who boarded the boat to aid their supreme god through to the realm of the dead. The Second Hour Ra's solar boat sails across the river until it reaches the second gate of the underworld, guarded by the gods known as the Souls of the Duat. For a human soul to cross those gates, they had to know each god by their secret name. If the human soul, when on earth, had prayed to the Souls of the Duat and offered sacrifices, that soul would be granted the god's favor and an advantage over the other human souls. As the gods of the Duat witness their supreme god Ra's passing, they speak to him, offering him their praises. On Ra's command, the souls of the Duat tend to the passing souls of the dead by granting them sustenance, water, and by making them whole again in cases of dismemberment. It is also said that the words the souls of the Duat spoke to Ra could help a soul during its journey if the soul could understand the words. Osiris, the lord of the second hour, rules over with the souls of the Duat by his side. As Ra's boat makes its way, it is guided forward by four boats ahead of it. First, there is Osiris's boat, then Isis's boat, then the third boat of a god believed to be Wepawat, the one who opens ways. Fourth, there is the boat of Nepper, who was considered another aspect or another manifestation of Osiris. There is a combined total of 42 gods and goddesses on either side of the four boats, 21 on each side. Inside the second gate, there were gods but there were also enemies. Most notably, there was Apophis, the great serpent who was eventually conquered by Ra, Set, and the rest of Ra's company. Other enemies do attempt to prevent the gods' passage, but Osiris' followers thwart them. These are souls who pledged unwavering servitude to Osiris on Earth and were destined to protect Ra in his travels. The Third Hour As with the previous gate, to cross the third gate, a human soul must know the gods' secret names who preside over this third region of the underworld, known as the Hidden Souls. Knowing the names meant that the human soul could not only pass unharmed, but it would also be rewarded with abundant water for its field in the afterlife, similar to the souls of the Duat, offering sacrifices for the Hidden Souls guaranteed the passing souls a significant upper hand. However, should the passing soul fail to name the gods, they were to fall into the gods' cauldrons. Collectively, the hidden souls were more terrifying than the souls of the Duat. They were originally created and called upon by Ra to protect Osiris and keep him safe, which explains why they were armed with fiery cauldrons and screamed terror-inducing roars. Ahead of Ra, there are three boats, and on those boats were several forms of the god Osiris who guided Ra through the third hour. While he sails through, 
Ra calls upon the hidden souls to protect Osiris. He blesses them for their protection of his own self, reminds them of the physical bodies and the estates he has already given them, and the rewards that awaited them. With that, he leaves the region and passes into the fourth hour. The Fourth Hour By the fourth region, the treacherous nature of the underworld begins to expose itself. While most of the proceedings were ceremonial and filled with blessings and praises in the previous one, this region is one of the first that harbors many enemies. Here, the enemies are hordes of snakes so vicious that even Ra commands protection from his followers and companions against the dangers. In order to gain access to the territory, a human soul must once again know the secret names of the invisible gods that reign over the region. Only then can it enter the fourth region, see the invisible guides, and survive all of its dangers and monsters. Instead of sailing through the river as he normally would, the danger forced Ra to travel through the terrain in a different manner. His solar boat is said to transform into a massive two-headed serpent that spits fire from its mouths. For protection, the ship is led into narrow passages made of sand and pulled across the terrain by his company of gods and servants. And even then, the procession still witnesses many monsters and creatures. Through the palpable darkness, the first snake that comes into passing rides a boat featuring two human heads, one on each end. The second snake has two wings, three heads, and four human legs upon which it walks. Third, a two-headed snake with yet another snake head in place of its tail. In addition, more snakes come along the way, and they vary in the number of heads. Some of them also feature human heads. In the end, Ra's procession passes by a giant scorpion and the goddess Uraeus, who takes on the form of a massive cobra. After passing the last snakes, they approach the gates of the fifth section. The Fifth Hour The fifth region is where Ra is pulled by his company of gods across a great capital city's roads. For a human to gain entrance, they must know the names of the hidden gods, and in reward, their souls are granted eternal peace and satisfaction. The reward is said to increase in value depending on whether the human devoted enough sacrifices for the hidden gods and seeker, the falcon-headed lord of the fifth region. During Ra's journey in this domain, he passes upon a small hill on which lies a human head with a scarab for a face that is said to represent Kipri who in turn represents renewal. The scarab is a sign of the hidden cave where Seeker resides. As such, Ra's procession takes the path under the scarab head and into the sand cavern, which is guarded by two sphinxes and two snakes. After passing the sphinx, Ra is met with Seeker, riding on a massive, winged snake with two heads. In Seeker's domain, there is also a lake of water, but rather than having water-like qualities, it only possessed the appearance of a liquid. Only those in the lake got to experience the true reality of the lake, namely, fire, whose scorching heat was used as a means of punishing those who the gods had deemed evil. Ra's serpent boat then moves past the lake and finds a sealed chamber full of sand and watched by a two-headed serpent. Several texts mention that this sand chamber contains the very seed of life itself. There is a final assembly of seven gods past the chamber who exact their vengeance on the people who have earned it. Those who angered the gods are condemned to be killed at the hands of those gods each day as Ra passes through the underworld. The Sixth Hour In this region, Ra's serpent-shaped vessel returns to its original form, the solar boat on which he travels the skies. The sixth domain is where Ra makes his way back to the water, where Toth and the goddess Amint Samuset lead him. To be granted entrance, one must know the names of the guardians of the gate. However, to pass safely to the seventh hour, they must also be able to remain focused and resist the goddess's attempts of distraction. Within the domain, there is a house with 16 divisions occupied by gods and spirits employed to guard the five-headed snake. Inside the massive, twisted body of the snake lies a man on his back. His head is that of a scarab, symbolizing Capri's death. 
It is believed to signify resurrection because as R.A. speaks his words of life, the god's body starts moving. What comes after the serpent are the three shrines of Ra, all guarded by serpent gods. They are said to represent his three forms, body, mind, and soul. Since the symbols on the shrines are a lion, physical strength, a human head, consciousness, and a wing, signifier of spirit. On the shore to Ra's left, there is yet another gigantic serpent. Although that one is tasked with devouring Ra's enemies, whether they are spirits, demons, or shadows, the serpent protects him during his passing through what is believed to be the primordial waters of Nu. The Seventh Hour The gate of this region is known as the Gate of Osiris. It bears this name because it is where Osiris chose to build his abode away from the sights of Apophis, the primordial serpent, and the enemies of Ra and him. The abode, blessed by Isis's powers, bestows the solar boat with a type of magic that enables it to hover over the land where there is no river. While Apophis is under the spell of the hidden abode, unaware of his surroundings, Ra strikes the great serpent with his knife. This explains the several accounts that portray Ra as a cat slaying Apophis the serpent. In many religious scriptures, it is also referenced that many blessings are promised for the souls that create statues for the serpent and recreate its death at the hands of the great god. Several books of the dead contain Isis's spells and utterances, which are recited by the dead to weaken Apophis. Those souls who aid in the killing of the snake are promised a high position alongside Ra. On some of Ra's journeys, Apophis is said to become strong enough that he remains undefeated. In those times, Isis, Set, the goddess Serket, along with Hertesuf and four of Osiris' female manifestations, bind the serpent in chains and stab it with their weapons until Ra has safely made it through. The Eighth Hour What characterizes and makes the Eighth Domain so unique is its circles. While there is not much information about any resemblance to the real life of ancient Egyptians, the circles, the doors, and what is kept behind each door is quite intriguing. As the gods of the Eighth Region pull Ra's boat, he passes several circles with doors. The door to each circle holds behind it either gods or monsters. To each, Ra calls, and they reply, though never in their true voices, but in the voices of many things, from weeping women to moaning men and tortured beings. Eventually, Ra reaches the end of the domain after passing the circles. The Ninth Hour When Ra arrives in the Ninth Region, he speaks to the gods standing on the shores. He declares that whoever knows the names of the gods shall be rewarded with a place of authority in the underworld. As Ra sails, he is preceded with what is believed to be small baskets carrying twelve godly rowers, whose secondary duty is to throw Ra's blessed water on the spirits that stand watch on the shores. However, the main duty of the rowers is to guide Ra to the place where he can resurrect the sun. On either side of Ra, spirits and creatures are watching. To his right, there are twelve gods and goddesses whose words of life empower Osiris. To Ra's left, there are twelve Urai, which are cobra snakes that breathe fire in acknowledgement of their god. At this point, Ra is close to reaching the end of his journey. The Tenth Hour Ra's scepter turns into a snake when he enters the tenth domain of the underworld. The snake is said to have two heads, one wearing a red crown and the other a white crown. Each color represented one half of his kingdom, namely the north-south. The snake also had four human legs, two for each head. The snake was curved, and a black hawk, Horus, was standing in the curvature of its body. Then, a procession of fully armed serpents and gods makes its way towards Ra, they follow the god as he sails towards the east, and they put down all his enemies while he safely crosses the region. However, Ra witnesses a few interesting scenes on his way out, the first of which is a living scarab beetle. 
Further down the domain, he sees two snakes supporting a round disc with their necks. He sails a little further and sees a group of goddesses being given the eye of Horus to care for it. Ra also sees eight more gods on their way to vanquish his enemies, twelve aquatic beings, and four goddesses, each with a serpent head growing out of its back. Finally, on his way out of the region, he finds Set, the lord of the domain who stands up and travels with him to the next domains. The Eleventh Hour Ra's scepter returns to its original form, and on his ship appears a large solar disk encircled by a snake. The disk's purpose is to show Ra the way through the pitch-black darkness of the underworld. As he sails on, he is preceded by snakes and gods, including the four forms of Neith, the goddess of war, and one of the manifestations of Nune, the female counterpart of Nu, the primordial water. This instance is believed to symbolize the sun rising over the sea. Ra then continues through the passage, which is of both the utmost beauty and terror. He first meets a god with three heads, one being a solar disk and the two sprouting from it being human heads. This god is said to be one of those at Ra's side until sunrise, but he never leaves the underworld. As the god sails through the underworld, he is met with another procession of serpent gods, multi-headed beings, and goddesses riding on Ura'i. To Ra's left side, he sees the burning city of the Eleventh Hour, where Horus and his serpent-headed weapon are vanquishing the enemies of Ra. Outside the city lurks a giant serpent, said to be as old as a million years, waiting for those who somehow managed to escape Horus's offensive. In front of the city were five pits, designed for torturing Ra's enemies, with each being under the command of a god or a goddess. By destroying the five fragments of the soul, the purpose of the pits was to ensure there would be no chance of future existence for those transgressors. The first pit had the enemies picking their heads with axes, while a lion goddess spewed them with fire before cutting them to pieces. The second teemed with dead bodies under the command of another fire-spitting goddess who also cut her victims with a monstrous blade. The third pit was dedicated to torturing the enemy's souls in the same manner as the other two pits, with divine fire and knives. The fourth contained the enemy's shadows, one of the fragments of the soul in ancient Egyptian beliefs. The fifth housed their heads, and both chambers were lit on fire. In the end, Ra passes along a valley where he is met with four enemies standing on their heads. Ra commands Osiris to cut them down, then looks to his enemies and details the tortures that await them in the five infernal pits. The Twelfth Hour At last, this is the hour of rebirth for Ra. Once he enters the twelfth and final domain, he is born again, and when this occurs, the primordial gods of water and time, Nu, Nut, He, and Hehut, enter the city to carry Ra back to the surface world. There, the god with a solar disk for a head turns into a dung beetle, a symbol often associated with the rising sun. Ra's boat is then pulled through the body of a serpent, where he emerges from the mouth into the surface world. Once the journey has been complete, a new life and a new day are born, and the blessings of Ra are distributed over his company of gods and the helpful souls he encountered on his perilous journey. <laughs> 